<clears throat> Alright, we have a new chapter of Boku no Hero Academia. Chapter 232, we return to TWICE, having infiltrated uh, the headquarters of the Metal Liberation Army. Um, he's seemingly amusing himself and showing off his ability by making tons and tons of doubles. Uh, first, making a double of himself, which comes out instantly, while he slowly forms a double of Shigaraki. Uh, then the double he made of himself works on a clone of Dabi, while also making another one of himself. And, and here we can see, although it had already been heavily implied, exactly how this process works. Uh, given that he can make two things, each one of him can make two things. It's kind of like an MTG Infinite, you know, you just... <clears throat> you end up with one more resource than when you started. It's like Splinter Twin. Um, so yeah, he's he's going off. He's comboing out throughout the city. Uh, he's begging him to beg for mercy. <laughs> His split personality is kind of waging war just as much as the many, many bodies. Good number of soldiers posted down below. It's just as Skeptic said, you have quite the impressive meta. Listen up, guys. You have nothing but doubles. But who's saying that? Probably just another double. Oh, he's talking to the the League of Villain doubles that he's made. Right, right. Even if you kick the bucket, the real you is still out there. So don't worry, he'll give you a nice funeral. You can assume the clone will die. <laughs> I'm just a double. I can die, but the real me keeps living. It's kind of freeing once you eternalize that. I could see so. This is a real kind of radical philosophy that he's espousing here. Um, that that once you internalize this idea that the real you will go on, even if the thing that is experiencing uh, the sensory experiences and subjectivity of being the clone dies, it's like you have to just embrace that possibility. Saying then, who are all of you anyway? So Dabby clone seems like he doesn't necessarily retain the memories of Dabby original. Not really sure who anyone else is here. Whereas the real Dabby, I, I assume, knows what's going on against with the fight against the, the, the Liberation Army. Would recognize everybody in the room. Baldi over there is a the Liberation Army boss. Wonder will meet didn't meet up with Dabby and Compress earlier down the street, so you're the versions who still don't know I conquered my fear. Hmm. <laughs> so Compress, getting up to speed quite quickly, but not really sure what's... <laughs> going on. It's very confusing. Of course I'm the original. I am the real me. doesn't matter who's who. Not when our hearts are in it and our lives are on the line. So... <laughs> mm, excuse me. One of the clones rushes off to save his beloved broker, but is instantly annihilated. His face just vanishing. I'm not sure who did that. Oh! It is. The, uh... Leader himself, just with one flick, so very fragile. You people don't seem to understand the point of taking him hostage. Can't even tell what he did. And we don't really know exactly what his powers are either. We saw him off one of his subordinates after the subordinate proved uh, insufficiently loyal. But I don't think we really were clear on what was the quirk at hand. Who by Gawara create any more doubles and I will kill Giren on the spot. He's a former member of your gang, so ending his life wasn't part of the plan, but nevertheless. Yes, this is the point of a hostage. To bait people out and then to restrict their actions. To hold a gun against the hostage's head. In a matter of speaking. So nicely here, it's one versus plenty. We're gonna roll the play, we're here to take our broker back. So they all rush in, they can still use their powers, we can see Dabby's fire coming out, and Twice's ability actually is just completely nuts. <laughs> the fact that he can he can make clones like this. Oh, and Gear 3rd activated. Gamu Gamu no Gigant Pistol. The Meta Liberation Army's man's right hand becoming super massive, or his left hand I guess. Interesting. And we know that the, the clones are quite fragile. So they sustain any sort of major physical damage, they just melt away again. So something like this, which can just smear through all of them, 
should prove to just take out the whole army. Is this a spread here? Oh no, no. The big hand coming down. I love this kind of gallery of reaction shots. Because it's, besides Giran, it's all just <laughs> clones. And five of them are just twice. And the fact that all five of twice's reactions are, are fairly different really just drives home his uh, weird, his quirky personality, if you will. <laughs> yep. And he just smushes right through them. They're gone. They've disintegrated. Some remnants of them fly out the window. I wonder if that indicates that one of them was uh, indeed real, but I don't think so. I think it was just the body parts that get smushed and spread. Awful people and so foolish. I think you could stand up to us. But one copy still remains. Just as it fades away, it makes another copy. Who quickly gets up. What is insanely powerful power? It's it's pretty cool because like I knew in this arc we would have the level up of all the villains and stuff. It, it kind of goes with this inverted shonen structure that I've been talking a lot about. So I knew that like yeah they're gonna they're gonna power up. They're gonna unlock new facets of their quirks. They're gonna do things that previously seemed impossible. But the the amount that twice leveled up. The amount that the true brokenness of this power has emerged is really cool in that it, it actually, it's not like the, the tier list of these villains uniformly just jumped up, but that now it seems like he might be the strongest uh, ally they have. Like, I, I don't see how Shigaraki's power, of course, very strong as well. Toga is extremely useful and got a huge upgrade, and, and Dabi's just like a regular powerhouse. But how can any of that compare to just unlimited clones of whoever you want with their full powers. Sure, they're fragile, but then you can just make more because it's unlimited. It's crazy. Things are really chopped off. Right hand too. That's the hand you smoke your cigs with. Oof. It's the sentimentality. Twice really on the verge of a breakdown here. And I'm giving them intel on you guys. Some broker I turned out to be don't apologize, people who don't do anything wrong don't have to say sorry. Little Bane isn't qualified for this. All those needless emotions only get in the way of your organization's goals. Crumble in the face of our will. Hmm. So this is kind of an interesting take. That the League of Villains is is too emotional. They're too per like too too personally invested in what's happening. And then if they really want to seize power, if they really want to affect change, they need to just prioritize the goals of the, the organization as a whole, and not these sentimental feelings, these personal grudges, these traumatic pasts. It's kind of interesting, because it really shows, in contrast, kind of how human uh, the League of Villains are. And it does seem like this might be their downfall more times than not. But, uh... I don't know. I, I feel like this, in the end, will probably be their strength as well. Um, and in a way that kind of mirrors our own heroes. Like, how many times have our, our heroes been able to exceed in a situation because they became so personally invested in it? Because it meant something to them personally. Yeah. Okay, so. Some noble dreamer or whatever. Ooh! The Shigaraki clone still kicking. I see, I see. Takes a quick swipe at the leader, but he's he's quite nimble for a guy that kind of looks like his age. So I don't know. I don't know if this is another Shigaraki clone, if it's the actual Shigaraki who's made his way up here, um, or perhaps it's another Shigaraki clone that, while one twice was running over to Giran, causing this distraction. In the background, another double was making, like, another double was making the Shigaraki demo, whatever. And a noble dream or whatever. Noble dream, you say. This is perfect. This is a great chance to see what you're made of. And immediately launches into this story. Once upon a time, a woman gave birth to a baby with a meta ability. So 
Hattie was still in chaos with plenty of prejudice against Metis. Metis suffered constant abuse, blatant discrimination. The woman watched as society attacked her child day after day. So this is like, I guess, before kind of mainstream quirk culture. Um, back when it was much more feared. It was kind of interesting. In, in the same way um, that X-Men often used uh, mutations and such as allegories for racism or uh, sexuality discrimination or things like that, um, you, you can kind of read into this allegorically. Um, but if you do, then it, it kind of just complicates what's happening with this fight scene, like who we're supposed to root for or whatever. So I assume the baby is him. You can see that his face in this... The, the flashback is like totally red and here he has just that kind of a uh, wine stain birthmark thing you know like that Gorbachev has um, and it seems like it's kind of moving about his face in this bottom right panel so something like that is happening through small solitary voice she lambasted the world this is just a quirk of my child ooh let the world be a place where my child can live freely she cried but her petition was buried by a ski sea of scorn and sneers, the woman never got to speak out again. Do we know why? It's the anti-meta mob killed her. Okay. So meanwhile, the, the a big fight scene is happening. The big hand is here again. It looks like it might have just clipped off Tomura's ear. So I'm not sure if that to me indicates that it's the fake one because. His ear got taken off so easily, or if it's a real one, because if the fake one's ear got demolished like that, then the whole body would just start to disintegrate. I'm not sure. The mother of the term quirk, of course. Are you mocking me? Oh, okay. So that's where the term quirk first appeared, was that mother saying, this is just a quirk of my child. And I guess it was kind of a, a martyrdom type situation that once she had died, people really understood the, the inhumanity of this anti-meta ability sentiment. Anyway, with the rise of the heroes and vigilantes, the government began to fight the chaos. During this time of reform, they brought up the woman's complaint. Meta ability is just another trait of the individual, nothing but a quirk. Long live diversity. Let's change those old ways of thinking, they said. However... The legislation they've enacted since then has only suppressed meta abilities even more. It's such a bizarre scene because they're fighting the whole time. They're having this conversation while trying to fight each other to the death. And more and more I'm thinking this is the real Tomura because look at the way he's being grasped here. I, I feel like if he was one of the clones, he would have just like, like, swished. Been a change in name only. All they managed to do is keep people from using their abilities. But until everyone can wield those powers as they wish, our society will never truly know freedom. Destro understood this. Oh, this is far from the future my mother envisions, she said. She sought to remake the world so that meta abilities could truly be called quirks. Yeah, it's not quite a quirk. It's not just like, oh, that's just how they are. If how they are never gets to be displayed in a public space, never gets to be exercised, never gets to be uh, kind of understood and, and expressed by them. Yeah, yeah. Inconvenient truth, though. Now do you see why we published Destro's memoirs? To incite rebellion against the state, to pursue true freedom, I take on those burdens to see Destro's dream fulfilled. Yes, his blood runs through these veins. I am re-Destro. So he's the son of Destro, or is it just metaphorical? I'm thinking maybe it's just metaphorical. At any rate, uh, he's he's able to do all sorts of stuff with his arm here. This, 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 it's like information overload on, on several levels now, because we're not only getting history... We're getting some kind of personality development of our, our new villain here, Redestro. We're getting a little bit of personality development of Shigaraki as we kind of see how he reacts to this stuff. Plus, as they fight, we're learning more and more about his powers. So, information overload. But let's, let's try to figure out what's going on with his power, at least. He, he can not just grow his arm, but it seems to move 
almost like totally independently of the powers of the rest of his body, the, the capabilities of his normal physical body. Like here on this page at the start, you see that he's facing away and yet his hand just juts out. Well, I guess I can do that. I'm doing it right now. But <laughs> the way it moves, the way it seems to almost sense Shigareki on its own without him even looking and grab him uh, seems to really indicate something. And then this even more so, that while he's holding them, he's twisting it like multiple times around. I certainly can't do that uh, as he, he gives them the old... Uh, I don't know. Insert your own Evangelion joke here. Is your pitiful... Oops, I thought this was a sprite. Pitiful gang of thugs with nothing but the urge to destroy carry any of that burden of history that we do. Hmm. I see, I see. And this kind of goes back to uh, the discussion they were having before about you know, why are we doing this? What is Shigareki's actual vision? You're talking with the doctor. And, I mean, yeah, it is just the urge to destroy. But even if it doesn't have a, a universal historical context, even if it doesn't signify some sort of cultural moment, some, some cultural need or anxiety, it certainly carries the weight of personal history. And... When it comes down to it, we, we can only experience the universal through the personal. We, we can only ever truly contextualize things in terms of how our life exists within that, that context. You know, like you can't, you can't really go outside your own life. You can learn, you can empathize, you can sympathize, you can, you can act on the behalf of others. But all of those are still just resulting from your personality, right? Your, your ability to empathize is thus based on your capacity as a person for that empathy. You know? What I'm saying is that he, he can't really... Like, like Tomura's entire body has already been filled. His entire mind has just been filled with that trauma and that urge to destroy. So, I don't know. I, I feel like... And I think we're going to see this, that uh, his resolve is no weaker. Anyways, twice I'm going to need you to cushion Giran's fall. And this guy attacked and I was hanging out the window a second ago. I locked eyes with him down below. Get ready. It's going to touch the tower. I know it. Oh. Compress? He's going to compress the tower and just completely shake up this whole situation? That's what I would do. Oh! No, 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 never mind. I see who this is. This is another Shigareki. The one fighting up here might still be a clone. Maybe the real one is down there. And begins to disintegrate the tower. Alright, alright. Okay, the tower shatters. A very, very cool shot. Reminded me of the end of Ocarina of Time. Supposed to die from falling from that height. You get the boss. One of those that commercials. Yes. So now he's fighting the real Shigaraki. The clone held up pretty well. I guess he never really got truly bashed. You know. He uh, he got grabbed, but he didn't actually kind of inflict the physical damage. And you can see the. Uh, Wine stain, bottom, birthmark spreading now all over Redestro's face. Okay, cool chapter, very cool chapter. Uh, let's look forward to more. This arc seems like it's kind of heading to the climax, but uh, there's many, many more cards in the hand. Many more things that could come. Like, for example, the giant ass Gigantomachia who uh, is, is flying towards them right now. All right, let's uh, look forward to next week's.